Milling Through History presents Forged Archaeology. When we think about the Middle East and the Holy Land, certain images come to mind. Certainly, one can never forget about the city of Jerusalem and its long history of being such an important part of three major religions. And yet, it is within the city of Jerusalem that perhaps one of the greatest controversies could have possibly have occurred when it comes to the world of archaeology. In previous episodes of Milling Through History, we have looked at the James Ossuary, one of the most modern examples of potentially a forged piece of archaeology, where scholars and experts have debated whether or not on this particular ossuary box, the words James, son of Joseph, brother of Jesus, indicates the legitimacy of a historical artifact that proves the, the existence of Jesus of Nazareth. But before the James Ossuary ever came into the light of day, there was another individual who was infamous for effectively creating archaeology to suit his own needs, and that person was Moses Wilhelm Shapira. Born in the year 1830 in what is present-day Ukraine, by the time referred to as Russian Annex Poland, he was a unique individual whose father had immigrated to the, home, to the Holy Land and would go, go find himself moving from modern-day Ukraine into the Holy Land in 1856. Now, while en route, he would convert to Christianity and then add Wilhelm to his name so he could make it easier for himself to gain Prussian citizenship. After arriving in Jerusalem, Shapiro would join a group of Protestant missionaries and opened a store in 1869 on what is now referred to as the Christian Quarter Road. He would, his store would sell the standard religious souvenirs along with ancient pots that he would buy from Arab farmers. Now, it was during this time that he was setting up a shop that an archaeological find would occur which would make massive headlines. The find was called the Mesha Stele, and it was discovered in 1868. This stone slab provided one of the earliest historical artifacts which proved the historical legitimacy of certain parts of the Bible. Now, what made it so unique is that it came from a culture referred to as the Moabites, and it discussed some of the events found in the Old Testament. And with the massive amount of interest in biblical artifacts coming into the world of general consumerism, Shapira decided to push the sale of these items, especially when it came to the Moabite culture. Now, Shapira would acquire the services of Salim al-Kari, who had helped create a paper copy of the stele and had acknowledged of the Moabite language. Now, with the use of local Arab craftsmen, Salim would supply Shapira with a large quantity of fake Moabite artifacts. And while the artifacts seem ridiculous by today's standards, especially when we look at uh, statues that have faces with handlebar mustaches, in the 19th century, there was zero comparison, which led many people to believe that these artifacts were authentic. With large volumes of artifacts being produced and sold, both public and private collectors uh, began to make purchases from Shapira. However, because he kept producing so many artifacts, suspicions began to arise about whether or not they were legitimately uh, historical artifacts or were they fakes being produced. Eventually, the truth was revealed as Salim acknowledged that he was selling these uh, forged artifacts and he was specifically supplying it to Shapira. Shapira countered the claim by saying that he was innocent and that he thought he had gotten an exclusive deal from Salim and that he was receiving all these artifacts as being the best seller within Jerusalem. However, Shapira would not let go of the biblical archaeological sales trade. Instead, while he moved away from artifacts, he began to deal in ancient scrolls. In 1883, Shapira presented strips of leather with ancient writing on it, claiming it was a copy of the book of Deuteronomy, with a few alterations to it compared to the one which is known in the world today. This alternate version included an alternate commandment that was given to Moses, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Now, Shapiro would attempt to sell the 15 strips he had for one million pounds to the British Museum. However, after closer inspection, it was discovered that these strips were fakes. 
Having been humiliated, Shapiro would flee London and travel to Rotterdam, where he would commit suicide, feeling that he had nothing left to gain. The strips were eventually sold at auction for the equivalency of 10 guineas, which by today's value is only $13, and has since disappeared. Now, it was rumored that they were destroyed by fire, but no one could ever confirm if this rumor was true. The grand irony of it all is that despite being forgeries, the Shapiro artifacts have gained value on their own by the collectors. Since there hasn't really been anything else of the Moabite culture that's ever been produced, these fakes really are the only thing that effectively give legitimacy to the culture. And so they are beginning to take on a unique view as themselves. But perhaps even more unique is since the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, a number of historians and archaeologists have been trying to find the missing 15 strips of Shapira's Book of Deuteronomy, namely because even the Dead Sea Scrolls provide rather unique copies of ancient books of the Bible, and some people question whether or not those strips came from the Dead Sea Scrolls or potentially had the same origins as them, in which case suspicions of their being fake were wrong, and in fact, the one time Shapira was trying to sell a legitimate historical item, nobody believed they were actually real. For more information, please consider these suggested titles. Be sure to click on the left-hand side of the screen to subscribe to our show, and on the right-hand side for our latest episode. And we will see you again for the next episode of Milling Through History.